Bonjour tout le monde. Hello everyone. Happy International Day of Pink. Today we wear pink to stand up to bullying and support those facing discrimination. If you feel alone, if you're anxious or scared, know that we're here with you today and every day. Now I want to begin this morning by addressing Canada's Jewish community. Tonight at sundown marks the beginning of Passover. Usually, this is a time for family and friends to gather around the Seder table. But tonight will truly not be like all other nights. I know staying in tonight and not gathering extended family will be hard, but it's the best way to keep yourselves and your loved ones safe. I hope you still find a way to connect with family and friends, whether it be on the phone or through video chat. To all those celebrating Passover, Chag Pesach Sameach. Over the past few weeks, we've all had to make changes because of this pandemic. Staying indoors as much as possible and not seeing friends and family is a big adjustment for everyone, but it's especially hard for some people. If you've lost your job, if you work in an industry that's been hit hard by this virus, you're worried about your family and your future. What makes the situation so difficult is how quickly it all happened. Through no fault of your own, your whole world has been turned upside down in a matter of weeks, and that can create even more uncertainty and even more anxiety. So we've brought in a whole range of new measures to help families and workers, seniors and business owners get through this. We've put in place a three-point economic plan. It supports business owners, including through new loans, while helping those who no longer have a paycheck through the CERB and protecting jobs with the Canada Emergency Wage Subsidy. I know many of you are anxious to see this subsidy delivered. We're calling on the opposition to join us in bringing the House back to le pass legislation so you can get the support you need as soon as possible. Canada Cabinet will be meeting this afternoon. As usual, most Cabinet members will be on the phone and I will be intending this one in person to discuss next steps. Depuis qu'on a annoncé la subvention salariale, on a eu beaucoup de conversations avec les gens d'affaires, des syndicats et des travailleurs. Je veux les remercier pour leurs conseils et leurs perspectives. Ces conversations nous ont aidé à adapter ce qu'on avait annoncé de façon à inclure un plus grand nombre d'entreprises et à aider plus de gens. Et c'est ce dont je veux vous parler aujourd'hui. On avait dit que les entreprises devaient démontrer que leur revenu avait baissé de 30 ce mois-ci par rapport à l'année précédente pour recevoir la subvention. On reconnaît que pour les organismes à but non lucratif, les entreprises à croissance rapide comme les start-up et les nouvelles entreprises, ça peut poser problème. Donc, on va assouplir ces conditions. D'abord, les entreprises devront démontrer une baisse de 15 de leurs revenus pour le mois de mars plutôt que 30 pour tenir compte qu'en général, la pandémie a eu des conséquences sur leurs activités à la mi-mars. Les entreprises pourront également choisir d'utiliser les mois de janvier et février à titre de période de référence pour démontrer une perte de revenus. Pour ce qui est des organismes à but non lucratif et aux organismes de bienfaisance, on comprend que vous faites face à des réalités différentes en matière de financement. Pour cette raison, vous auriez le choix d'inclure ou d'exclure les subventions gouvernementales lorsque vous calculez vos pertes de revenus. Si votre entreprise est touchée par la COVID-19, le gouvernement vous donnera jusqu'à 847 dollars par semaine pour chaque employé. Et comme on l'avait annoncé, cette subvention sera rétroactive au 15 mars. Since we announced the Canada Emergency Wage Subsidy, we've had a number of conversations with stakeholders and workers who've provided us with valuable feedback and helped us refine what we'd put forward. I want to thank them for their input. We want to make these emergency measures as effective and inclusive as we can, so we're listening and making adjustments along the way. We previously, previously announced that to qualify for the subsidy, businesses would have to show a 30% drop in revenues when comparing the month this year to the month the previous year. We recognize that this could be an issue for nonprofits, 
fast growing, company, growing companies like startups and new businesses. So we're going to put in place more flexible rules. Companies will now have the option of using January and February of this year as reference points to show a 30% loss. And businesses will only need to show a 15% decline in revenue for March instead of 30% because most of us only felt the impact of COVID-19 about halfway through the month. We understand that charities and nonprofits are experiencing different types of pressures when it comes to funding. For this reason, they will have the choice to include or exclude government funding when calculating loss in revenue. If your company or organization has been impacted by COVID-19, the government will give you up to $847 a week per employee. And as we've said before, this subsidy will be retroactive to March 15th. Our government understands that not all businesses operate the same way, and that's why we're making changes to include as many of you as possible. We will keep listening, but we really hope you will use this help from your country and from your fellow citizens to rehire and pay your workers. If our economy is to get through this, we need businesses to survive and workers to get paid. Job numbers for March will be out tomorrow, and it's going to be a hard day for the country. We're facing a unique challenge, but I know that if we pull together, our economy will come roaring back after this crisis. Au cours des dernières semaines, on a instauré des mesures sans précédent, dont la subvention salariale d'urgence et la prestation canadienne d'urgence pour aider les travailleurs, les familles et les entreprises. Cela dit, certaines personnes ne sont pas admissibles aux prestations qu'on met en place. D'autres ont besoin de plus de soutien. Je pense par exemple aux pigistes, aux professionnels des soins à domicile et à ceux dont les heures de travail ont été réduites à 10 heures par semaine ou moins. On est en train de trouver des solutions et on va vous aider. Nos aînés traversent aussi des moments difficiles ces jours-ci parce qu'ils sont particulièrement vulnérables face à la COVID-19. En même temps, Ils s'inquiètent de l'impact de la chute économique sur leurs économies et des dépenses additionnelles à cause de cette crise. On va donc avoir des mesures supplémentaires pour aider nos aînés les plus vulnérables bientôt. Pour ce qui est des étudiants et des jeunes qui s'apprêtent à entrer sur le marché du travail, on va avoir plusieurs mesures pour vous appuyer. Mais ce matin, on commence avec une première étape. To help young people and small businesses affected by COVID-19, we're making changes to the Canada Summer Jobs Program this year. We will now give CSJ employers a subsidy of up to 100% to cover the costs of hiring students. We will also extend the time frame for job placement until the winter because we know that some jobs will start later than usual. And because many businesses have had to scale back their operations, they will be able to hire students part-time. Our government is also encouraging all employers who have been impacted by COVID-19 to make adjustments so work can continue. For example, if you run a local food bank, you may be doing deliveries instead of serving people on-site so you could hire students to help you. We will also be asking MPs across the country to reach out to businesses and organizations providing critical services in their communities to look at how students can help during this critical time. In this economic climate, it's hard for people of all ages to find work, but young people are especially vulnerable. They're new to the workforce, so they don't have a lot of money set aside for this kind of situation. At the same time, they need work experience to secure their next job and money to cover their living expenses and help with tuition for the rest of the year. Today, we're taking a step in the right direction to help young people find work during this difficult time, but I want to be clear, we will be doing more. Just like we will do more for those who need help but are not eligible to receive the benefits we've announced so far. We're also working around the clock to ensure that our frontline workers have everything they need to save lives and stay safe. Overnight, we received a half a million N95 masks from 3N, 3M, and they'll be distributed across the country where they are most needed. I know the past weeks haven't been easy, but we're going to get through this together. 
if everyone keeps following the instructions from public health experts. So please stay home as much as possible. Only go out for essential things like groceries and medications and try to make that trip once a week or less. And when you do, remember to keep two metres from those around you. That's the best way to stay healthy and protect our frontline workers who are doing so much to help all of us. Encore une fois, merci d'être avec nous ce matin. Je suis maintenant heureux de prendre les questions des médias.